Zidondani, Electro Ninja here, and welcome back to Electro Ninja's Lab. In today's video, as well as later today, <laughs> both of today's videos, we are going to be talking about the episodes that released last week for Miraculous. Now, obviously, I just want to say that, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I did already do quick reviews, so if you guys want to see those, then definitely do make sure to go check them out. And I reviewed, basically I reviewed those episodes as they came out. But this week, I decided that I would do something special for them and actually go in depth with each of the episodes and actually talk about what all the different aspects of the episodes mean for us moving forward. Uh, first off is this one, which is going to be Mr. Pigeon 72. And then the one that's going to be happening later is going to focus on both Soul Crusher and Queen Banana just because of the fact that those two have a lot connected to each other. So, yeah. So first off, let's talk Mr. Pigeon 72. The episode was honestly really interesting, taking place basically right after the events of Gang of Secrets and moving forward to honestly be amazing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was actually insane, everything that happened in this episode. But, yeah. <laughs> to start off, um, th like I said, this is taking place basically immediately after Mr. Pigeon 72. Marinette and Alia are talking, basically discussing, okay, what are we going to do about all of this stuff? Are we going to, how are we going to decrease the stress that Marinette is dealing with right now and one of the ways that Marinette is trying to figure out is how can we stop people from getting akumatized maybe there's some special power that was hidden in the book and we can use that to figure out exactly how to stop the akumas from happening um, maybe there's some special potion whatever um <laughs> And obviously she keeps looking and looking, but she can't find anything and is basically forced to um, keep looking, <laughs> but she doesn't find anything immediately. Instead, um, <laughs> uh, lots of things happen, but with that, uh, with everything that was going on with Mr. Pigeon 72, Alia is actually responsible for finding out what is actually the way to do this. And I said in the, in my quick review that this was an episode that really focused on how Marinette can do a lot of things on her own, and I was actually wrong, but we'll talk about that in just a sec. Um, but anyways, Alia is like, okay, girl, you need to take a break. You've been as Ladybug for the past few hours. You've been trying to figure this stuff out for a long time. You've shown me that a lot of people have been akumatized way too many times. You have a record of everyone who's been akumatized. You've looked through everything. You need to take a break. Maybe you should go see Adrian. I mean, he and Kagami broke up. And Merida is like, what? <laughs> I gotta go help Kagami. <laughs> Which is honestly just insane that Marinette is so focused on making sure that Kagami is okay with the whole breakup that it honestly just takes over her life. And she drags Kagami out of the school, <laughs> out to the, or, uh, and she goes to see Kagami, who is with her mother at the time, which that surprises me that got me was able to go with Marinette in the first place <laughs> but yeah Marinette kidnaps Kagami they go off to go to the pool where uh, Adrian is doing a photo shoot right now and um yeah <laughs> and they keep uh, and Adrian is screwing up his photo shoot because of the fact that they're using pigeons when Adrian is allergic to pigeons, which is actually kind of interesting because Adrian says, uh, said earlier that he was allergic to feathers, which actually leads me to think that maybe he is just allergic to pigeon feathers after this point. There is a possibility that he's not just allergic to pigeons, 
but is instead allergic to um, a lot of birds. And the doves that they mention are probably just the um, one of those specific birds that he is not allergic to. Maybe it's their specific. They have a specific dandruff or something. Basically, the same reason why a lot of people are allergic to dogs and cats is the dandruff. Some dogs have it, some do not. Um, and uh, basically, a lot of people blame the fur when actually it's the dandruff. And some dogs just don't produce that dandruff. And um, so, yeah. <laughs> and the same thing could probably be do uh, said for um, Cat Noir or Adrian, he's allergic to pigeon, whatever it is, uh, that is specifically on the feathers, I don't know exactly, but he's allergic to whatever's on those feathers, but he's not allergic to it if it's on dove's feathers, maybe doves don't produce it or whatever. Lots of different things, not important right now. <laughs> the point is, he's not allergic to doves. So they try and figure out a whole bunch of different ways that they can use it, having him block his nose, um, lots of different things, uh, making sure that a pit, uh, having making sure that certain things go smoothly, lots of different training. Mister Pigeon is being is having a lot of hard time while Bob Roth is being an asshole, <laughs> and basically rinse and repeat over and over again. Not a huge deal, um, but even. <laughs> Kagami and Marinette caused some issues because they tried to wave to Adrian and um, <laughs> then uh, Marinette tries to push Kagami out to be with him on the frickin uh, when he's diving down and there's a mistake and she jumps in after him which I'm just like <laughs> everyone knows that we're all loving these moments it's awesome <laughs> Uh, all of the Mar uh, Mari Adrian and uh, Lady Shat, all of the different uh, shipping moments are amazing. Oh, I love it. <laughs> we all love it. Oh. But anyways, the battle continues, uh, basically, everything continues to the point where <laughs> Bob gets pissed and so does Gabriel because there's so many mess ups and uh, yeah obviously Mr. Pigeon gets upset <laughs> I don't remember what his name is but yeah he gets upset uh, and gets akumatized once again big whoop and now he can turn people into pigeons which is honestly a really amazing power <laughs> but it's also really interesting how they actually decide to handle this episode um Basically, throughout the episode, we don't really see much. And I say that Ladybug is doing a lot of the work herself, but in actuality, she's not really doing that. It's mostly Alia, which is really interesting to think about. So, here's what happens. For this battle... Um, before the battle even starts, Adrian gets turned into a pigeon along with Kagami. Marinette runs into a bathroom, uh, blockades herself, transforms, and is ready to about uh, is about to call Cat Noir when Plague comes in and is like, Ladybug, Adrian's been akumatized. So Marinette has to call up Alia, say, Hey, I need you to take care of this. She, uh, she activates her lucky charm, gets ready, all of this jazz. Alia sends a uh, fake ladybug and fake cat noir to the location to basically distract him the entire time, which is honestly insane. Marinette, in the meanwhile, digs a hole, uh, uses her uh, think uh, her lucky charm to dig a hole through the door so that Plague can bring the freaking <sighs> uh, akumatized object into there so that she can break it, which, can I just say, oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> it's also really interesting that not once does anyone, um, uh, do any of the, uh, 
Kwamis actually use their powers for this episode, which is actually really interesting because of the fact that uh, pretty much every episode since then that we've seen so far, a, a Kwame has been using their powers, <laughs> which is also just... I'm excited to see how that's going to turn out. But, yeah. Alia uses her power to basically uh, distract them, and in that situation, she actually de-transforms Ladybug and in Cat Noir into these two kids that we've never seen before, which is really good, but it's it looks like it's something that she completely fabricated. But it's also interesting to note that in this moment, these two kids look like they could not possibly be Ladybug and Cat Noir. They're the only people who got this drastically changed by their akumatization, uh, by, um, if, if they were the actual Laban Cat Noir, this would be the only time that we have ever seen anyone detransform to be that different. And, I mean, obviously we've seen things where hair has changed and certain aspects have changed, but completely changing not only the skin color, the hair color, the hair style, but all of that, even height, they changed. And it's just like, how in the world would Hawk Moth ever believe this? Like, they have... She she did a really good job. But it was also really interesting because... Yeah, Hawk Moth could probably tell... If he saw it, he would probably be like, Oh my gosh, this is a trick. Don't fall for it. But at the same time, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> Uh, moving on. Uh, luckily, Plague is able to grab the ob uh, to grab the f uh, whistle and bring it through into the play uh, into the room where Marinette smashes it, captures the Akuma, and everything is fine and dandy. Everyone's back to normal. Marinette jumps down as Ladybug back down to talk to Mister Pigeon, which again I've ta I've forgotten his name, but. Um, she hangs out, uh, she's there, she's like, are you okay, let's figure stuff out, when all of a sudden, Alia shows up, who has, over this time, been looking to see if she could find something that would actually work, and she hands the paper over to Marinette, who immediately under uh, is able to figure out, oh my gosh, she can use her powers of creation to create an object that would be able to protect the wearer from ever getting akumatized again. Now, the problem is that it does say uh, in the subtitles that um, this will pr protect you from negative emotions. Later, uh, and I want to talk about that briefly, I think that is a mistranslation, uh, that is a translation error. I think what it's supposed to say is this will protect you from getting akumatized again. It's not going to stop you from having negative emotions, but it will prevent Hawk Moth from spotting your negative emotions, for one, but it will also prevent um, Akumas and uh, Wachmadil uh, and Amuks from actually getting into the person's area, which we actually get to see later, and I'll talk about that in um, Queen Banana, but it's, it's something that is so exciting for Mr. Pigeon, because at long last, he is free from ever getting akumatized again, and it's amazing. Thank goodness for that. But it does also raise the question, then, what exactly is going to happen when he becomes Monsieur Rat? Which, um, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Um, <laughs> we know that eventually he is going to become Monsieur Rat, but it's not going to be through an akumatization, like I said, unless for some reason Hawk Moth figures out how to completely bypass the special charm, or the magical charm as they're being called, and break through it. But we don't know for it right now. 
But I would also like to briefly mention that apparently this is the reason why Marinette has her new outfit, which I kind of see as interesting because she take a lot of the times that we've seen her, she's taken out the magical charm after she's been uh basically she's been ladybug it's it's odd to say the least what exactly is going on and we'll talk about that more as things happen but it does raise a few questions and it kind of makes me wonder if maybe she's going to be giving magical charms to other people besides those people who have been akumatized um basically giving a magical charm to both herself to protect herself but also to Alia and Cat Noir, possibly in episode 5, but basically this charm will be hidden and it's basically a way so that the uh, they'll be able to know that they're going to be safe, even if they suddenly get an influx of, bad, of negative emotions, they'll be safe, and that's the important aspect to remember here. Unfortunately, we currently just don't know anything about episode 5, so that's annoying, but honestly, this episode was so interesting to get to see I said, like I said before I thought that this was an episode that was uh, I said before that this was an episode that was mostly showing Ladybug by herself but in actuality, it shows more how good Alia is by herself because she is able to think on her feet, and it's actually really interesting. We've seen multiple times that Marinette has done things by herself. Cat Noir gets defeated for some reason, and yeah. Obviously, we all want to see something where Cat Noir is the one who's left standing and has to figure out how to fight. <laughs> and we also want to see something with Alya. But Alya is kind of getting her chance to shine here, which is really interesting. And it makes me wonder why it took so long for her to get the Miraculous full-time. Because we know that later in, uh, in the season, <laughs> we'll talk of, uh, we've already talked about that in the Optigami video, but in the Optigami video, or in Optigami, Marinette gives Alya the Miraculous of the Fox at long last full time, which it is kind of understandable that she didn't want to give it to her right away, but at the same time, it brings up a question of, why not? Especially after this episode, because she shows her ability to shine, and sure, absolutely, she has been akumatized multiple times in the past, and obviously they want to be careful with that, but at the same time... She has proven herself multiple times over. She hasn't revealed any identities to the public. And honestly, that is probably the most surprising thing. Because she is a reporter. She has shown that she is a reporter. Yet she has not revealed any identities of anyone that she knows. Even uh, She knows, uh, one, she knows that Marinette is Ladybug. Two, she knows Nino is Carapace. And obviously herself is Reina Rouge. Obviously she hasn't revealed that. On top of that fact, she didn't even reveal that she was Reina Rouge to Marinette, her best friend. And almost didn't reveal her identity to Nino, her boyfriend, until that actually came to pass. Which is insane to me to just think that she still just now got her uh just got her miraculous miraculous full time and it leads me to wonder when is everyone else going to get their miraculouses full time i do think that nino is probably going to be the next one to get his miraculous full time because obviously makes it makes sense but i could also see a few others getting the Miraculouses full-time. Specifically, each of the girls. Um, basically, all of the girls that are Marinette's friends, I could see them actually getting the Miraculouses full-time. Specifically, Rose, because of the fact that she did it so well. <laughs> she was able to hide her identity so well that 
she was able to subtly hand the miraculous back to Ladybug in the episode before and you don't even notice it. The only way that you could notice it is if you pay really close attention to Marinette's face as she's being handed the miraculous. It's insane to think about. And yeah, I honestly think that Rose is probably going to be the next person who's going to get her miraculous full time. But I also wouldn't be too surprised if um, characters like... Um, uh, freaking, uh, Julica gets her miraculous full time, especially since she's going to be getting her miraculous for her first time, probably very soon, probably within these episodes, um, and so on and so forth. Even me, Len, I could see getting her miraculous, uh, full time pretty soon with probably Ivan also getting it because, uh, getting his miraculous at the same ish time. It's kind of all debatable depending on what you want to say, um, and as for Alex, I do want to briefly mention Alex and when she's actually going to be getting her Miraculous just in general. I don't think it's going to happen for a while, actually. I think that there's going to be some point, some point in her history that is going to be the signifier to Marinette, she is ready. She is ready to learn this stuff. She is ready to become Bunnix full time now i do think that it's going to happen within the next few episodes ish or not episodes but seasons either this season or the next i could see her picking up the miraculous but the reason why i say that it's probably not going to be this season is because of the opening in the opening we see many of the people who are going to be holding miraculouses the only one that is on the page, but it's not actually shown very well, is that of Bunnix, who has her umbrella on uh, sh the way that it is, which signifies to me that they're not showing whether or not it's the older Bunnix or the younger Bunnix. So, yeah, needless to say, some things are going to be really interesting, and we'll talk about that in a future <laughs> theory, but... Anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. It has been a little bit of a long one, and probably the next one is going to be even longer, so look forward to that. <laughs> but anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and ring that notification bell. And of course, if you guys do want to support the channel even more, then definitely head down to the description and check out all of our links down there, including our social medias, our other channels, and ways you can support us financially, including the merch store, the book, and our Patreon, which a big thank you to our current patron, Shimi. But anyways, guys, I have been Electro Ninja, and I will see you guys next time. But on!